So chances are you can't watch this video on Facebook in Australia, and there's a long complicated reason as to why that is the case. Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur. Now, one of the apps that I frankly complain the most about is Facebook. I think Facebook can be a thing for good. I believe that Facebook is a great way to organize. It's a great way to keep in contact with friends and family, especially during a pandemic. But it is also bad in so many ways that false information gets out there. Algorithms create mob-like mentalities. And Facebook, in a strange way, because of these algorithms, have also created like it kind of little echo chambers whether you're on the left or the right you don't see the other picture and if you've watched the social dilemma on netflix and i highly recommend you do if you have not you will see that facebook and also twitter and other social media algorithms are really quite bad for people in how they feed people their news how they recommend other people that you check out it's you know, it, it's a very complicated matter, and I think Facebook and Twitter have done far more harm than good in the long run. But here's an interesting thing. Facebook in Australia has decided they are going to cease sharing news articles on the platform. Now, first of all, why are they doing this? Well, there is a bill being proposed that media companies have been complaining that Facebook and Twitter have basically, basically been stealing their content and they've been sharing the content on Facebook and that they're stealing from them and they want to get compensated for that. Now, why they feel that way, I don't know. If the whole point is to get views, then Facebook and Twitter is probably your best friend because people share an article and when they share that article with people, people will click on the article, therefore they will read the article or at least parts of it and you will get paid because of the clicks. But apparently, you know, Australian news media sites, they're kind of tired of sharing the stories with social media. They don't want people to come to their site through Facebook and Twitter because their primary source of information then is Facebook and Twitter. What they want you to do is they want you to come directly to them. Now, I don't know any of the Australian media sites off the top of my head, to be perfectly honest. But it would basically be like, say, an article for the New York Times got shared on Facebook and people were reading it. Well, people aren't going to go back to New York Times. They're going to go back to Facebook because that's where they got the news source. So the thinking is that because people aren't going to New York Times, the New York Times would therefore charge Facebook money for the privilege of sharing that article. In my opinion, it's pretty backwards. But this is the direction Australia is going. Now, interestingly, Google was considering removing uh, Australian news from their search engine, but ultimately made an agreement to pay the Australian media for that, you know, the content, even though, again, they're sharing the content, they're not curating the content. Um, they are just, or maybe, well, you know, anyway, that was probably a bad choice of words, you know. They're not creating the content, they're sharing the content, and that can only be a good thing especially when Google is like the number one website in the world. Well, Facebook decided, like Mark Zuckerberg, they basically decided, no, no, we're not going to do that. And so they have removed news from the Australian Facebook website. Now, this is going to be in, an interesting experiment because, first of all, we're going <laughs> to, the fact that you can remove news or that Facebook would remove news from their platform is a very dangerous thing. I think that, let's say Facebook was run by the government, and let's say the US did this, or China did this, or heck, even Australia did this, guess what? Uh, they're gonna, they would kind of consider that a dictatorship. They would consider that stifling information, and it would not be allowed. And yet, Facebook is doing it in Australia. This is going to be very interesting to watch going forward because it kind of shifts. Since a lot of people get their information from articles on Facebook, that's going to add a big question mark. How are people going to get their news now? And if they are going to get their news, are they going to get the right news? Because right now it seems like this is, I don't know how far this goes. Like 
are personal blogs, for example, included in this? Like, if you have, like, a conspiracy theorist website in Australia, but it's not technically part of the media and they don't want to be paid for their content, are those stories going to be allowed on Facebook? I mean, false information spreading is already a huge problem. If you don't believe what a huge problem it is, look at that situation with the finance hub and all the bad information he was giving his viewers and scamming them out of legitimate money because he was giving them bad information and basically he was getting away with it until YouTube finally put a stop to that. And by the way, he's going to get in serious trouble for all that. Well, let's take a look at the CNN article real quick. So, uh, Facebook has barred Australians from finding or sharing news on the service, a dramatic escalation of a fight with the government that may have wide-ranging consequences both in the country and around the world. Uh, the social media... The social networking company on Wednesday said the people and publishers in Australia will no longer be able to share or see any news from local or international outlets. So even the international outlets, and that's, that's basically cutting off information around the world. If you are in Australia and you get your news from Facebook, you basically have had the information cut off. You cannot view it anymore. The decision appears to be the most restrictive move Facebook has ever taken against pub content publishers. The company's action comes after months of tension with the Australian government, which has proposed legislation that would force tech platforms to pay news publishers for content. So, um, what the proposed law introduced in Australia fails to recognize is the fundamental nature of the relationship between our platform and publishers, Campbell Brown, Facebook's Vice President of Global News Partnerships, wrote in a blog post. Contrary to what some have suggested, Facebook does not steal news content. Publishers choose to share their stories on Facebook. I agree, by the way, but here's where the story is. It's just, it's not only the fact that Facebook can do this that's causing quite a problem and a stir. It's the fact that they were willing to do this. Basically, to save a little bit of money, and Facebook makes a lot of mo money, they could definitely afford these fines, they cut off everyday people from the world. Those people are cut off from the world. You cannot see a either local or an international news site. No CNN, the New York Times, no Fox, uh, no whatever the heck is in Australia. I'm sorry, I do not know of any Australian news websites off the top of my head. Uh, would my blog be shareable on Facebook? I don't know. I mean, it's a review site. It'd probably be okay. What about, say, Bent Corner? Um, a guy who writes personal opinions, um, some of which I agree with, some of which I don't agree with. That's fine. But would his blog not be allowed in Australia? I mean, is it even Facebook's place to tell people that they cannot get information that they need to hopefully make better decisions about their lives? By cutting off the mainstream media, do they risk a bunch of conspiracy th theories just floating across Facebook infecting all these minds. I mean, this is like a real serious question, whether the ethics of Facebook should do this and what the potential damage is. Now, some people might be saying, and I'm going to grant you this one, that, you know, the media in Australia might have done this to themselves. I mean, the thing is, they know damn well, they know damn well that when their stories get shared on Facebook, that increases the likelihood that those stories are going to be read. Um, and by that token, maybe they're shooting themselves in the foot because Facebook technically doesn't have to share those stories. They are their own private company, as are they. But again, I propose to you this information. Look at it from their point of view. They have watched over the years. Remember, like, when the internet got started? You subscribed to the New York Times Digital Edition. You subscribed to the Washington Post. You subscribed to Time Magazine. You went straight to these companies and you said, I believe in your your news. I value your news. I value your reporting. I'm going to pay you money for the privilege to get that news. And they had all the eyeballs and they had all the information on their subscribers, which means that they could now sell advertising to help them out. Well, now Facebook comes along and basically becomes a middleman. Now, um, you don't know who's really reading your articles or where they're coming from. You just know they're coming from Facebook or they're coming from Twitter or they're coming from Google+, Plus. if that's still a thing. I don't think it is. Uh, I know MySpace is still around. So it's 
they basically were tired of having a middleman. They said, no, 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 we don't want a middleman anymore. We want you to pay us for the money or you need to take it off. And I think what they were hoping, I think a lot of the news uh, organization in Australia wanted this to happen. Because, first of all, th um, that means that, yeah, people have to start going to them again, in theory, to get their news. And they can start getting that information. They can start getting that eyeballs. They can start getting that money again. But also, it allows them to basically cry freedom of speech problems because Facebook is stifling freedom of speech. It's stifling the news. Now, again, Facebook technically is allowed to let whatever content they want onto their platform. That's one of the big dilemmas of the social networks is that this is where most people get their interactions this is where most people get their news this is where most people get their information but facebook and twitter technically control it and they, if they don't want something on there whether justified or not uh whether that information should be on there or not they can take it off and so many people get that information like yeah look that ebook about how a you know, sick man can, you know, put the moves on someone who may not necessarily be age appropriate. Yeah, that person probably justified not being allowed on Facebook. But that person who, you know, believes that Trump legitimately won the election, you know, is that necessarily a view that's dangerous? Uh, if a person believes that and just believes it in private, it's probably harmful. What about the person who believes that the guy who played Chewbacca is really a Wookiee in real life? Um, is that a dangerous theory? Uh, what about uh, the rumor that Jamie Lee Curtis is a hermaphrodite? Is that considered hate speech? Should Facebook remove that, or is it all good, clean fun? Uh, what, a, what about the discussion on the COVID-19 vaccinations, which, you know, I personally believe they seem to be effective no one's died from them yet and the side effects have been very minor but are people not allowed to debate whether or not they personally think it's safe and if facebook makes that decision like who gives them that power i mean this is where it gets really really complicated so a lot of people and now facebook because they want to save some money have basically said to australia you're not getting the news you're not getting the news locally. You're not getting the news internationally. You are cut off from the world. You're cut off from the world. And now what? I mean, obviously people can now go to the individual news sites, and maybe they should be doing that anyway. But, you know, what, again, what if it's like a blog? What What if it's 9-11 was a conspiracy theory.com? They're not a news website. They might claim to be. I don't know. But if they don't pass as a news site and that article gets shared, is Facebook going to remove it because it's technically not part of the media and they're not being forced to pay for it? I mean, you start seeing the complications of the damage that can be done to this. And, of course, you know, the big question, like, how much power should Facebook have in any of our lives? This is this is scary. <laughs> this right here is a very, very scary thing. And by the way, hashtag delete Facebook was trending on Twitter. Uh, I barely use Facebook as it is. I might just take another break from it because, you know, I, yeah, I have some huge concerns about this as well. Um, you know, I, I am one of the, in one of those peop, people where it's like, you know, as long as you're not calling for violence... I think you should really be allowed to say whatever you want for the most part, as long as you're not suggesting something illegal, you should be able to say whatever you want. But this is uh, this is big. This is big. I mean, yeah, Facebook, and who knows what's going to happen. I mean, I know Facebook's doing this because they want to basically force Australia's hand. They want to get the public against uh, the government for writing these bills and saying, like, no, we should not have to pay for news articles. In all fairness, I don't think they should have to either. But by making this unilaterative move, by basically saying, you know, we can cut you off from the rest of the world and we can cut off the news for everyday people and we can just do it with a snap. I can't snap, sorry. They have put themselves in a very vulnerable position, especially when Zuckerberg was just recently grilled by Congress about Facebook's power and what they plan to do with it. And Zuckerberg basically said, we will not abuse that power. 
well, this kind of looks like he's abusing that power. We, it's, this could very easily be seen that he's abusing that power, and I don't know where we go from here. This is going to be very, very interesting. Anyway, I would like to know what all of you think about this. By the way, Parler's back online. <laughs> For those of you who hate Facebook, I guess you can go back to Parler again. Uh, what, what do you think about this? I'd love to know. Comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.